I'd like to welcome everyone to our 4 p.m. evening mass. Also, anybody in the parking lot in their vehicles who are listening, welcome as well. And those who will be watching this online, welcome. So let us start in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, as we acknowledge our sins, so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, that, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip. When they heard it and saw the signs he was doing, for unclean spirits crying out in a loud voice came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river he, they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God, who refused me not, my prayer for his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're getting closer to Pentecost, of course. And so Jesus is reaffirming this love toward us. And we remember that the, the love he speaks about isn't romantic love. It's not about sentimental love. It's all about this, his teaching. The commandments, if you love me, then you will follow my commandments. And, you know, his teachings came from the Father, who he conveyed to the faithful. And so forth, this Father and Son in our one. And so we understand that the Advocate, who will be coming, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, is so important. I better say it now and not later. Do a novena to the Holy Spirit. Do some kind of prayers if you wish. Sometimes you may have an impossible task and you're not sure exactly how to pray. Come Holy Spirit, help me with my father, with my mother, with my children, with somebody who's dying. The Holy Spirit responds when you pray to the Holy Spirit. Remember, when Jesus ascended into heaven, he said the Advocate would remain with us. And we know that the Holy Spirit is responsible for giving birth to the Roman Catholic Church. This is why the gates of hell will never prevail against it, because the Holy Spirit is always present. But sometimes we don't focus on the Holy Spirit. It's always, and there's nothing wrong with this, Jesus or the Our Father speaking to the Lord, or some kind of spontaneous faith with, between the two of them, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. But the Holy Spirit is very present constantly and will work with us if we're willing to, you know, speak and talk to the Holy Spirit. So when we think of how Jesus is conveying this love, he wants to reassure us of all the teachings that he gave us, that he is the truth, the way, the life. He is the gate in which you enter eternal life. He's the cornerstone in which we base our faith on and have hope in eternal life. And you know, that list is a long list that Jesus gave us to show that, you know, is, is something that we need to do. But, you know, there is the worldly standards that we fight against constantly on a regular basis. And, you know, the, we, we all know and are familiar with the strongest always take command. Justice is dedicated by revenge and destroying the enemy. Pride is esteemed in our society 
anger and violence is taken to levels to bring hatred and death on a regular basis to every corner of the world, including our own country. Every time we turn on the television, I can't stand it. You know, there's just violence, anger, hatred. You know, we're fascinated with war, like sumo wrestlers who are coming to the match and ready to collide with each other. And one is knocked out or knocked down. And we admire the strength and despise the weakness. It's very evident in our competition with sports. And, you know, whatever sport it is, we always admire the one who's got this long winning streak and the poor win, the poor loser. Oh, well, there's next year. We strive for greater and greater technologies as if they're going to bring everlasting peace. What a false idol that is. You know, God is thrown away. It's discarded. He's discarded. He's turned into a myth. He's not alive. It's all a fantasy. And we know better. You know, we know the scriptures. They bring us to faith. They give us hope. I think Jesus' message, because it's so contrary to the world's message and its standards, you know, we know we can't do it alone. And this is where we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. And understanding that that Holy Spirit is very active today. Always, wherever we are, we can ask. Miracles happen constantly because he's so present to us. You know, the second reading expresses what Jesus has done by the command of the Father to bring heaven and earth to reconciliation and the power of God. You know, there's, you heard in the first reading how Philip went out and cast the demons out of people. This is what Jesus did on a regular basis from village to village, from town to town. And he silenced them. And now Philip is doing the same thing because at Pentecost he received those gifts. You know, we just finished Confirmations. Confirmations is, is all about receiving the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Anytime we can pray to the Holy Spirit and ask for those gifts, whatever they may be, He hears. He's close by. You know, when I think of how close it is to Pentecost, well, it's two weeks away, but we have plenty of time. The readings are going to reflect not just this theme that we've been hearing for a week or so about God's love for us and the love that Jesus has for us and the love that the Father has, but now this advocate who's coming, and you know, this is a great time to rejoice because the Holy Spirit can change anything in any way for the good, mind you, and it's very effective. If you're not used to it, start. The Holy Spirit hears every single word and thought and deed. And when we are in earnest asking the Holy Spirit, miracles happen. Philip certainly showed that miracle. All the apostles had the ability to cast out demons, and they did. So we ask the Lord God, the mediator between heaven and earth, as Jesus, after he ascends into heaven, to help us with the grace to ask the Holy Spirit for anything that we need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. On this sixth Sunday of Easter, we pray for our Holy Father, bishops, priests, and deacons, that the Holy Spirit may be with them in their work of teaching and preaching the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to hostilities in Ukraine and Sudan, for a true and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all mothers living and deceased, for expectant mothers, especially those in domestic crisis, and for mothers grieving the loss of a child. Through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may these special women be guided and affirmed in their vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work in the medical field, that they will not only seek to do no harm, but will guard, cherish, and protect all human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the vocation crisis in this country may be overcome by men and women willing to give their lives over to the service of Christ and his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, May God's healing spirit ease their suffering, give them strength, and restore them to wholeness, especially for Doris Ramirez, Andrea Maldonado, Officer Richard Anderson, Rhoda McCarthy, Jean Sanova, Don Matos, and Marty Cantu. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially for Maria Benavides Brewer, Courtney Miller, Lorraine Cook, Tony Chavez, Esther Quintana, Dick Boyer, and Fred Bates. For these and the comfort of their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's Holy Mass intentions are for the living and deceased members of the parish of the Incarnation. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God the Father, first these through our prayers and petitions, we ask them in faith, and we ask them through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please join in singing worship hymnal number 914. Oh, breathe on me, O oh breath of God. Worship hymnal number 914.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed by the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and John, our Archbishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you O god his almighty father giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer. may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with light, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the 
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, <laughs> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing worship hymnal number 948, Bread of Life from Heaven. Worship hymnal number 948. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this gospel sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength 
of this saving food through Christ our Lord. I'd like to give a Mother's Day blessing, so will everyone sit down except all the mothers. Remain standing. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now you all may stand. We have some announcements. Join us for a holy hour Thursday with Father Juan Diego, CFR, on May the 18th at 6 p.m. with Mass at 5.30 p.m. His talk is titled, Mary, Our Merciful Mother. Next Saturday, May the 20th, St. Vincent de Paul Fifth Store will collect donations from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the church parking lot. They will accept clothing, shoes, kitchen items, and small furniture. They will not accept large items like sofas, oversized chairs, and mattresses. Please see the bulletin for more information or call the office. And in honor of Mother's Day, we have candy bar Snickers for mamas. So as you leave the church, you'll receive one of those. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing worship hymnal number 883. Hail, Holy Queen enthroned above. Worship hymnal number 883.